Hello, everybody. My name is Rupan Deb, and I'm the co-founder of MoneyWise Smart. On behalf of the MoneyWise Smart team, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this session. Our topic today is innovative strategies to generate cash flows when you need them the most. I know it's quite a mouthful, but I could not figure out a way to shorten it and convey what we are going to do today. So I'm very excited to conduct this session and the next couple of hours are going to be absolutely packed with value. Now, today we are going to discuss some very interesting option strategies, which are not about option trading, but are strategies catered to the long-term investor. So innovative option strategies to generate cash flows when we need them the most. So this is our agenda. We are going to recap some of the fundamental concepts, but we are going to just speed through them, uh, okay, like bullet train, uh, train because, uh, you know, as uh, everybody uh, is familiar with what options are, and then we are going to talk about some option secrets uh, to avoid losing money in the long run. Uh, we are going to talk about the surest way to get very wealthy over time, but it's unfortunately the slowest way. Uh, nothing that we do here in MWS is about, uh, you know, quick wins, overnight riches, uh, because we don't uh, believe that's possible. Uh, then we are going to uh, dive into a case study uh, discussing a situation where I'm very low on cash and let's say there's a, a massive market correction and there are lots of uh, undervalued opportunities. So how do I generate cash flow to fund these abundant undervalued opportunities? And then I'm going to uh, discuss how you can take your option journey forward. So with that, let's, uh, let's dive in. So this is our team. Uh, my partner, Fan Liang Chia, uh, he and I co-founded this company and Sean is our uh, head of marketing. Now, options are very powerful instruments, uh, but unfortunately, uh, most people who use options use them to speculate. In fact, uh, you'll find that 99% of the people use options to speculate. Options are leveraged instruments, so when we luckily end up on the right side of the trade, it can be very profitable. But when we end up on the wrong side, it can hurt us badly. And as we will soon see, most people end up losing money with options in the long run. Let me repeat that. Most people end up losing money with options in the long run because they do not understand the uh, fundamental principles of risk management. Now, in MWS, we do not use options to speculate or trade. And that is how MWS is very unique. But we use options to generate cash flows for us in a risk managed way when we need them, uh, need the cash the most. And we use a concept that, uh, as you'll soon see, uh, which we have learned from none other than Warren Buffett. Now, sometime back, uh, I went and put up this poll on uh, one of these uh, large Facebook groups. It's one of these uh, option groups, probably is the, is the largest uh, FB group that exists. Uh, so very simple question. Since you started options trading, cumulatively, have you made money or have you lost money? Now, other than the 41% who claim that they made money, we can safely say that uh, the balance uh, have lost money. I mean, they have responded in different ways, but, uh, but you know, most people were at least honest. They said uh, lost money, but hoping that will change. So on the same day, later that day, what I did was I uh, put up a trick poll. And instead of asking this question directly, I went and put up this question. That if we ask each member here, and then I asked the question that I had put up in the previous poll, since you started options trading cumulatively, cumulatively, have you lost money or made money? What do you think the majority will say? And there comes out the real truth. 47% say that majority lost money, but they will say that they have made money. So you can clearly see that a large majority of this 41% who claim that they made money actually lost money. And there have been lots of studies. My sense is that over 90%, if not higher, of the people who, who trade options, they end up losing money. And there might be lucky streaks from time to time, but in the long run, unfortunately, that's the case. Now, we will soon see why that is the case. Now, you all are familiar with the structure of an option contract. So you know what? I'm not going to waste any time on these. Uh, so you all, you all know these stuff. I'm just going to you know, glide through the uh, slides to see if there is anything that I should uh, 
pause to talk about. You know what an option premium is, a call option, a put option, price of an option. Uh, okay, now this is a concept while it's, uh, while all of you understand this, but it's uh, good to reinforce that the market price of an option should always be greater than or equal to, at least equal to the benefit the owner can get by exercising the option, which is basically the intrinsic value of uh, the option. Now, if that is not the case, then it will be suboptimal for the owner to accept the market price. Now, uh, you know, I, at this point of time, for people who have attended my session, uh, know that there is a favorite example that I always give. And, uh, you know, even risking repetition, I'll again give that example. Let's say I have a, I have a used wallet, an old wallet, which now I don't need anymore. And I just want to sell it off on one of these, uh, you know, secondhand marketplaces. Now, if I put it up for sale, Finally, you know, I can ask for a price, but what I will get, uh, you know, that's that's anybody's guess because, you know, it's a very old wallet. Uh, maybe I'll get $5 or $10, who knows. But if I now uh, put a $100 bill inside the wallet, and then if I put it up for sale, and if I declare that, you know, there's a $100 bill inside the wallet, then it would just not make sense for me to accept any price that's less than $100. So in this case, the $100 becomes the intrinsic value of the wallet. So, you know, that's uh, pretty uh, straightforward. So the option premium uh, that someone pays for an option has two components, the intrinsic value and the time value or the extrinsic value. Now, the intrinsic value of an option, we all know for a call option is the share price minus the strike price. You know, some uh, calculations here, you all are very familiar with this. The extrinsic value of the option uh, is the portion of the market price of the option that exceeds the intrinsic value. The extrinsic value is also known as the time value. So here, you know, again, I've showed the calculation, you all are familiar with this. The interesting thing about extrinsic value, which we use a lot, uh, is that it decays over time. So uh, none of you are beginners, but uh, I'm sure, you know, you will appreciate that uh, here there is absolutely no speculation. If we can master a strategy to separate out the intrinsic value and sell only this time value and every morning as the sun comes up this time value is guaranteed to keep going down so eventually it will go to zero by the time the option expires so you know obviously that's very cool and i can guess that you know some of you uh, would already be practicing uh, doing this but then we will uh, look at what are the risks of uh, doing this and how we can uh, mitigate those risks now, I'm sure you're familiar with the option payoff diagrams uh, as well. So here, you know, this is the stock chart. Let's say the stock price is at 32. If I buy a call option, uh, the strike of which is 38, and if I pay $2 for the option, uh, effectively, uh, my total premium would be $200 because uh, here, let's assume the multiplier is 100. It's not necessarily always 100. There are options uh, where the multipliers uh, are different, like options uh, listed in Europe and Hong Kong. But let's say in this case, this case the uh, multiplier is 100. So the maximum loss for me, even if this company goes bankrupt and the stock goes to zero, is $200. However, the break-even point will be $40 because I have paid $2 for the uh, for the option, $2 per sh uh, share. So I have to recoup that, and above that. It's the profit zone, and that profit is uh, unlimited uh, for a uh, call option. That is, if I'm buying the call option, or in other words, if I'm long the call option. Uh, now, this is the uh, this is how the payoff diagram of a call option compares with the payoff diagram of uh, a stock. So, when you're buying the stock, the payoff diagram is just a straight line. So, if you have bought the stock at this point, the stock price goes up, I'm in the profit zone. If the stock price goes down, I'm in the loss zone. But in case of a call option. Uh, the loss, long call option, the loss zone is limited, whereas the profit zone is unlimited. So above this break-even point, uh, I enjoy the same upside without really, uh, without really having a massive downside. But then uh, let's see if if that's the case. Then why would people just not keep buying call options? I mean, it's uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, even that does not work, and uh, and we will see why. I mean, it can work if someone is uh, lucky from time to time. But uh, as a strategy, it's uh, difficult to make money that way. Now, that brings me to this story, which uh, earlier today I had shared uh, on, uh, on our group. Uh, so I have this uh, good friend who uh, in 2022, around October, uh, this is the Meta stock chart. And, uh, you know, most of you would probably know that uh, the Meta share price had absolutely uh, crashed and it had fallen below 100. 
at that point of time, on the 28th of October, uh, this friend, uh, he had the foresight and in brackets luck uh, uh, of uh, buying a bunch of uh, leap calls uh, expiring uh, in January 2024. Uh, that is a couple of months from now. And uh, he bought the 100 strike call and he paid just below $25 uh, per contract. So his total uh, investment was about uh, yeah 24457 That's including the commission. And uh, fast forward one year from now, uh, that is on the 20, uh, I think this picture is from the 26th of uh, October. That is just, uh, yeah, 26th of October. That's what uh, this says, just last week. And I had been, uh, you know, uh, because I exactly knew his position, I uh, also knew that he would be sitting on a massive amount of unrealized gain. So he was absolutely over the moon and he called me to inform me that he exited this position. Uh, he uh, I asked him, how did you exit? He said, oh, I, I sold the position and I, I made, uh, and he sold the position at uh, at bid, uh, 187.7. Uh, so whatever he purchased for 24.46 uh, plus a bit of commission, he sold for 187.75. So that's like a massive, uh, massive jump. So I uh, congratulated him, but then I broke the bad news uh, to him and I told, I informed him uh, that uh, you have left about $600 on the table. And he was completely surprised by that. He said, uh, you know, uh, so I, I in fact wanted to pull his leg. I told him, but you know, you have made so much money. So why, why, why would you care? But he said, of course I care. And $600 is not a small amount of money. So anyway, uh, we'll, we'll take a break from the story. And, uh, you know, later I will uh, discuss uh, why he, why I said he, uh, uh, left the six hundred dollars and how he could have avoided it, but uh, uh, you know that discussion will only be targeted towards uh, the people who stay till the end. So that's your and uh, people who show their commitment uh, that they're uh, really serious about uh, learning uh, uh, options the right way. Uh, so now a payoff diagram of a long put is exactly a vertical mirror of the payoff, uh, payoff diagram of a call, uh, where you know if the stock goes up, your maximum loss is capped at whatever premium you paid, but uh, on the downside, uh, your gains keep increasing. Of course, in case of a long put, uh, the maximum gain is if the stock uh, goes to zero, you know, uh, because the stock price can't go below zero. Now, uh, this brings me to another story. Uh, this is the story of a trader. Uh, let's call him Peter uh, here. Uh, now. Uh, you would remember a couple of years back, there was this massive uh, craziness going on uh, with this GameStop uh, stock, right? Uh, I'm sure you would have, uh, you would have, uh, you would be familiar. So uh, some retail uh, traders, or more so speculators, uh, they were pushing up the price and some uh, hedge funds were, uh, who shorted the stock were absolutely getting decimated. And uh, this uh, Reddit group, Wall Street bets, uh, you know, they were kind of trying to come together and uh, literally declare a revolution uh, uh, on, on this. And then after some time, as one would guess, the GameStop stock started uh, crashing from its ridiculous highs. So this guy, Peter, he went and purchased a bunch of put options. And from the time he purchased the put, uh, put options, the share price almost halved. So you can imagine uh, how lucky he got. So uh, who thinks he made a lot of money? Uh, if you think he made a lot of money, uh, type yes. And if you think uh, he might not have made a lot of money or he, you know, he did not make a lot of money, uh, type no. Let's see who thinks. I mean, I'm giving you this uh, information that since the time uh, Peter bought his put options, the share price of GameStop uh, literally halved, uh, you know, literally, uh, literally uh, crashed and became uh, half of that. Uh, okay, uh, Kang Yao says, uh, depends on the premium paid, not as much. Okay, all right. So we will also come back to this story. I, I, I love uh, keeping these stories dangling, but uh, don't worry, I won't forget. I'll, I'll uh, you know, uh, finish the story once. Uh, no, let me see, the, the strike, uh, uh, Tell me anything. Let's say, I mean, I'm giving you the information that he had he had uh, a way out of the money uh, uh, put option. And uh, the time when uh, I'm saying the stock price halved, uh, still his expiry was uh, 
uh, further away. Okay, let's let's move on. I'll come back to the story once we cover a couple of more concepts. Now, this is the vertical mirror image of a long put here. I'm, if I sell a put, that is, if I'm a sh uh, if I'm short put, uh, if I've shorted a put, then this will be the uh, payoff diagram. That is, my maximum gain will be the amount of premium that I bring in by uh, selling the put, but my loss, uh, you know, if the stock price goes below the break even, then uh, I will have an unrealized loss. Now, this is not necessarily a bad, bad strategy. I mean, we, you'll soon see uh, that we use this strategy a lot. But but yeah, if someone is just speculating with this, you know, this can really hurt if suddenly the stock price uh, drops. Again, uh, vertical mirror image, uh, payoff diagram of selling a call. Uh, selling a naked call is a really, really risky idea. It's a really bad idea because uh, here your downside is unlimited. I mean, if this stock ends up uh, breaching the strike and ends up becoming a multi-bagger, I mean, like, for example, what happened to uh, GameStop uh, when that craziness was going on, uh, you know, anyone who has shorted a call, you know, just like uh, Melvin Capital, those uh, hedge funds got killed. Similarly, a person who has shorted a call can also get killed. Uh, now, why do most traders, uh, why most traders don't end up making money in the long run? Now, there's a, there's a good reason for that. Now, this is the typical equity chart of, of an option buyer, someone who only buys options now, his, uh, his or her equity uh, curve looks like this. There will be sudden jumps in uh, you know, the value of the equity when, uh, uh, I mean, out of pure luck, the stock uh, could be moving in uh, the direction. Uh, but when that's not happening, uh, the time value that we talked about earlier keeps decaying and uh, the value of the option keeps, uh, keeps uh, getting eroded. Uh, of course, I mean, there will be from time to time, uh, you know, this person can uh, can be lucky when the stock again moves uh, in, uh, you know, his or her direction. But uh, then it's a very, very difficult strategy to, uh, to sustainably uh, make money on and uh, to make this strategy repeatable. And anything that is not repeatable uh, is, is basically gambling. Uh, and uh, you know it is it is not a good good strategy. Hoping and praying is never a good uh, good sustainable uh, strategy in anything that you do. Now, markets like these can up, can be an absolute deathbed uh, for long options. Uh, but this is where uh, option sellers uh, they have a ball. Imagine selling short puts. You know uh, somehow uh, you uh, select strikes which are below uh, uh, the the range of where your stock is or selling calls above the range you know they can they can end up making money uh, for quite some time and uh, as long as the stock price stays above the strike price you know the option seller will uh, make money till the time something like this happens where their face can be ripped off if they have sold naked puts uh, without uh, the uh, keeping capital aside similarly uh, you know uh, Call option seller, a naked call option seller will, uh, you know, uh, have a ball as long as the market is like this. But there is no guarantee, right? I mean, who has a crystal ball uh, to predict where the market is going to be? And then if something like this happens, then again, uh, their faces will get ripped off. And, you know, we can see this from uh, from the uh, uh, the pair diagram of the call option. So, so when neither long or short puts or calls seem to be working, what do uh, what do the typical uh, traders do? They uh, that's when the discovery of credit spreads happen. So what are credit spreads? Again, I'm sure most of you know that there. Let's say you're selling a short put, but instead of leaving it naked, you go and buy a long put at a strike which is slightly below the short put. So that if something like this happens, then yeah, the short put will lose money, but the long puts will start gaining, and your exposure is just the uh, strike difference between uh, between these two. Uh, options, the short and the uh, long options. So in case of a credit spread, this is how the payoff diagram will look like. You see, you have just truncated the loss zone. So in this particular example, while your maximum gain still stays at 200, your maximum loss is capped at 1800. Now, typically, uh, you know, a, a typical uh, credit spread would have uh, a, a probability of profit that is that is very high. Now, let's say if this is the information I give to you, who, who thinks this uh, credit spread uh, would be an attractive credit spread? You have, uh, you have an 80% probability uh, of 
making a profit. So would you think this is a reasonably safe position uh, to take? Uh, type yes or type safe if you think uh, this is uh, this is reasonably safe. And who thinks this is unsafe? Type unsafe. Let's see. Uh, okay, unsafe, unsafe. Most of you, most of you think it's it's unsafe, unsafe. Okay, all right. So that's that's actually the correct answer. And why is it unsafe? Uh, it's unsafe. Can anyone venture a guess why it's unsafe? Anyone? Why is it unsafe? But absolutely, Aman is absolutely right. The expected value. So if you do this uh, credit spread a thousand times, eight, uh, you will have, I mean, this is what the probability is. It might be slightly here and there, but longer you do this, I mean, out of thousand, you have about 800 winning trades where you will make $160,000. But the 200 losing trades will cost you uh, $360,000. So your uh, expected your expected profit from uh, from these 100 trades is actually a loss of uh, $200,000. So the very high probability of winning is often very seductive, but the result of not understanding expected returns as uh, Aman mentioned here, and Jason has actually done the uh, calculation, the result of not understanding expected returns can be disastrous in the long run. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, I can I can see you guys are uh, fairly advanced, so you you understand this. But unfortunately, most option traders they do not understand this. They just focus on the probability uh, of the gains. Now the problem is, it doesn't matter what happens in one trade or or five trades or even ten trades. What really matters is what happens over the long run. And as far as we are concerned, the long run is over our lifetime. I mean, nothing short of that really matters. I mean, uh, imagine there is no greatness. Uh, you know, when I turn 70 or 75 or 80, there is absolutely no greatness in me saying that, oh, you know what? I was a great investor from the age of uh, 35 to 45 or 35 to 55. If after that I end up giving back everything, then there is absolutely uh, no greatness. Now, who all here have watched this movie? Uh, type yes if you have watched this movie. It's called Dumb Money. Today we have uh, we have a lot of discussions on on GameStop. Anyone? No one has watched this movie. Oh, that's that's interesting. In fact, when I saw this movie <laughs> movie come out, I was very interested in watching this movie. Anyway, uh, the good news for you is you haven't lost. Uh, you haven't missed much. Uh, in fact, this movie is about uh, that GameStop saga, and uh, I actually uh, think it's a very dumb movie. Why it's a dumb movie? Because at the end of the movie, they painted. I mean, all these guys. Uh, the guy on the with the green shirt on the left, he's the hedge fund guy. He acted uh, as the hedge fund guy who had shorted GameStop uh, when that madness was going on. And you know, as you can see from his uh, face, he was having uh, a nightmarish time. Because GameStop uh, kept rising uh, every day, and all these other people, these are the this uh, this guy in the sunglasses. He's the guy who was uh, who was calling and uh, kind of uh, rallying the forces, telling everybody that he's long GameStop. Everybody else, uh, I mean, this he was on Reddit, and he would do live streaming, and everybody would listen to him. This lady uh, here, a nurse, uh, deep in debt. Uh, you know, but they were all listening to him, and they were holding on to GameStop. And the movie ended. At a point uh, where the all these uh, small guys, the, the retail uh, traders or speculators, they were kind of shown to be heroes because the movie ended somewhere here when GameStop was somewhere here. So there were captions like, "Okay, this person uh, made uh, hundred thousand dollars. This person made you know hundred sixty thousand dollars." But uh, in reality, uh, all they were doing uh, was absolutely uh, st stupid speculation, and finally. Uh, oh, Roman has uh, watched the movie, and finally, most of them obviously have uh, you know given back uh, everything, and uh, you know have uh, I would suspect uh, they were even worse off from where they started. I mean, it never ends well, as you can see from uh, this particular post, which I picked up again from uh, another uh, options group. Just uh, spend uh, time in just reading these highlighted uh, parts. Why, right? take a sip of water. So I will take advantage, put up stuff, and ask you to read when I can take my water breaks.
So as you can see, this guy is deep in debt, have lost like, huge amounts of money uh, trading options. Uh, he has he just lost 45K in a 170K account, uh, had few dozen naked straddles. So basically, he, I don't know if it's a he or a she, but this person clearly is absolutely clueless about what uh, he's doing. And, uh, by the way, I mean, if I'm using he, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm referring to, I mean, it's just a shocker. Please <laughs> excuse me because, uh, you know, uh, it's shorter than saying he or, or she. So uh, he clearly has no clue what, uh, what he's doing. And, uh, and, the only thing I think uh, I would I would give him uh, credit for is at least uh, at least he is open about it. He's not pretending. He's definitely not one of those 41 percent who uh, is actually losing money, but is claiming that uh, he's having money. But uh, clearly, this is not the way to uh, what this person is doing. It's just gambling. Now, sometimes it can end very very badly. I don't know if uh, if any of you know who this kid is a very sad story it's literally a kid alex uh Kearns. uh in 2020 he was uh incorrectly assigned on uh i think some of his uh naked options uh by robin hood he obviously didn't have a clue of what happened he suddenly saw his account had a huge debit balance and he took his life i mean my heart bleeds when uh you know things like uh, i get to hear things like uh this uh, and this is the ultimate price of uh, of uh, ignorance. I mean, you know, uh, and doing something, uh, basically playing with fire. I mean, doing something without knowing what uh, what uh, you are doing. Now, how do we do it differently? Uh, so, since we talked about uh, GameStop in the past, I'm going to give you an example of how we use options differently you know the strategies are the strategies are uh, same i mean many of you would be uh, using them but we go uh, a bit uh, deeper and uh, here is an example so when gamestop was at about 70 dollars uh, and the markets were going absolutely berserk uh, we realized that the implied volatilities of uh, the options are ridiculously high you see the implied volatility was 160 percent so we went and sold a bunch of two dollar strike puts what does uh, uh, selling a two dollar strike uh, put do it basically obligates us to buy gamestop at two dollars when the share price was 77 dollars if the share price comes down, uh, you know, uh, below two dollars by the expiry, and uh, these options were expiring in two years. So we sold a bunch of it, five hundred eighty-three contracts, and uh, we brought in a premium of sixty-two cents. So which translates into a cash inflow of over thirty-six thousand dollars. Okay, this is the cash that we brought in uh, at the time when we uh, sold the auctions. Now. Were we speculating that, uh, were we sitting and praying that, oh, the GameStop uh, share should not come down below $2? No. In fact, I could not care less. Uh, I do not think GameStop is, uh, is a company that I would even come close to. Uh, I have absolutely, uh, I have absolutely no uh, uh, interest in uh, wanting to own uh, GameStop. I think, uh, you know, uh, the markets were going crazy for whatever reason. Both the people who were buying it as well as the people who were shorting it were being uh, absolute idiots. Uh, but what we just could not ignore was the elevated implied volatility. So now let's analyze uh, this position, why we did it. Now, the max risk, our max risk, uh, apparently, as uh, you know, reflected by uh, this platform that we use, is uh, $1.38 uh, per contract, which is $2, uh, which is a strike price. And if GameStop goes to zero, uh, then we are obligated to still buy GameStop for $2, right? So $2 is a risk, but we have gotten $0.62 cents of premium. So our max risk is $1.38. But is it? Is it the max risk? Let's dig deeper. Now, we don't just go and sell an option based on the price action. Before we did this, we read the GameStop documents extensively. We, uh, we uh, reviewed uh, their balance sheet. We, uh, we studied their annual report, their income statement. And what we realized is 
that GameStop, see, we are fundamental investors. Okay, we are not speculators, we are not traders. We use options, but fundamentally, we are long term investors, value investors. So uh, we realize that GameStop has net cash, that is, even after paying off all their liabilities of 88 cents per share, which means that our actual worst case risk was actually 50 cents per share. It was not uh, $1.38. So that translates into 29150 So now think about it. I have brought in this $36,000 right away. The moment I sold it, I had $36,000 hit my account. And my worst case risk will happen sometime in the future. Now, all I need to do is I need to invest this $0.62 cents or this $36,146 just at $8 per annum for a period of eight years to come out even. And uh, or if I get a slightly higher return, let's say if I manage to get a 13% return, I mean, these are just random numbers that I uh, plot, then I would need to invest this $36,100 at this rate of return only for five years to come out even. And I'm very confident of being able to achieve this because our uh, long-term track record is significantly higher, higher than this. Uh, in fact, I'll show you uh, later that we have, uh, you know, over a fairly long period of time, comfortably uh, beaten the S&P 500 or, uh, or any other benchmark index. So this is how we think of uh, this uh, particular strategy that for us, more than bothering about where the GameStop uh, stock will be. In fact, I really couldn't care less where the GameStop. Uh, in fact, frankly speaking, I, I I don't even know where the GameStop stock ended because for me, it was a, it was a no-brainer that I'm, I'm bringing in $36,000 today and I have time to invest that. Even if the worst case scenario hits, all I need to do is invest that $36,000 for a few years uh, you know, and definitely not in GameStop. It will be in, you know, one of the high quality businesses and uh, we will uh, come out even. So uh, who thinks that this can be a cool way to think of uh, the option cash flows? If you think that it's a cool strategy, if you like it, type cool. If you uh, didn't like it, then it's it's absolutely fine. Let's see if if uh, anyone thinks uh, this, is, this is cool. Okay, uh, at, least, uh, at least two people uh, found it cool. All right, so uh let's let's move on now finally this is what uh happened to the position and as i said i have no clue uh, uh what finally happened to the gamestop i mean i know where it is now but eventually you know whatever we sold for 62 cents we bought back 28 contracts for 32 cents and the balance 555 contracts we bought back for uh, 17 cents as the implied volatility come uh, came down and finally, the position ended up uh, in a $25,000 uh, profit. So we were quite uh, happy with it. And by the way, some of our subscribers followed exactly, I mean, you know, this was by no means a core position, but uh, I know subscribers who uh, took a much larger position following exactly the same uh, philosophy and, uh, you know, ended up making a few hundred thousand dollars uh, in, uh, in, in, in this position. Uh, a very similar uh, position. In fact, at that point of time, we were sharing. Uh, yeah, uh, that's that's also right. I mean, this all happened within a four month period. So you know, uh, uh, from uh, October uh, to uh, to February. Uh, so uh, sorry, this date actually it's my mistake. The date is not 2021. This date should be 2020. Or is it from 2020 to 2021? Uh, either of those. But yeah, it happened within a four month period, uh, $25,000. So how to how to build a winning system? Uh, Kang Yao says, why do you just sell 583 contracts uh, contracts instead of more? Why close the position? Okay, we'll, we'll take up those questions uh, uh, later. So how to build a winning system? Now, do you want to know the surest way to uh, build wealth over the long term? The surest way to build wealth over the long term is owning a high quality business. Uh, it's basically a compounder over a long period of time. Nothing beats this. Uh, you know, if you uh, if you look around, I mean, I'm sure you know lots of uh, traders. But if you uh, try to find, uh, you know, a, a successful trader who has been who has been doing 
uh, speculative kind of uh, trades with options. Uh, yeah, from time to time, uh, you'll hear of people making money. People uh, make money over short periods of time. But if you want to look for someone who has been consistently uh, making large amounts of money over, let's say, 20, 30 years, maybe, you know, worth over $100 million, you will find a lot of long-term investors in that category. But uh, you won't come across too many uh, uh, traders uh, who can, uh, uh, you know, uh, claim to be in, in that category. Now, uh, you might say, but isn't is in hindsight 2020, how would you, how would you know? I mean, uh, you know, that uh, the stock will uh, go up. Well, uh, I mean, is it really? I mean, as I say, we are uh, fundamental investors and that stock price is basically, I mean, as some of you uh, would have guessed, is Apple. Now, uh, you know, I don't think it needed a rocket science if someone really uh, looked at the kind of returns Apple generated over the years. Uh, uh, and how consistent the returns were, or if someone looked at how consistent they consistently they maintained the margin. I mean, as long as someone understands how to uh, read financial statements, uh, you know, it, it's really not a uh, rocket science. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, we, uh, we have researched Apple. In fact, I even shared a conversation on our uh, Facebook group, a conversation that I had with a fund manager friend, uh, pointing out how cheap Apple was, uh, I think somewhere in 2016 or 2017. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a different matter that, uh, you know, at that point of time, I didn't uh, take a large position because I didn't have liquidity, but it was really no brainer. But then do stocks uh, go up uh, smoothly? No, they don't. I mean, there are uh, uh, these scary periods, uh, which, and these drops are very significant drops, which, uh, you know, now we are looking at the big picture, so we may not appreciate it, but in many cases, these drops are more than 50% drops. Uh, but instead of looking at these periods as scary, what if we change our perspective and think of these periods as opportunities to use option strategies to fund the purchases of slices of a high quality business uh, at a discount? So how do we uh, do that? And that's where the expertise in using options from the perspective of a long-term business owner as opposed to a speculator comes handy. Now, using options, we can help to generate cash flows to buy the business at these discounted prices to the intrinsic value. Here, I have just drawn an approximate uh, line which depicts the intrinsic value of the business. Uh, so while we are at it, we like to stay focused on the operating business to understand how the business is compounding instead of uh, just you know, staying focused on the stock price. And uh, we like to focus uh, on how the business is compounding its intrinsic value over time, as opposed to the short-term fluctuations in stock price and all the associated noise. Now, the problem is, temperamentally, it's very difficult to do because of something that's called availability bias. Now, the stock price and all the other associated noise is more easily visible as compared to the operating metrics of the business because the stock price is at our fingertips, right? Whereas uh, to you know really go and find out the operating metrics, I mean, we have to do some work and most people uh, are not happy uh, putting in that work of going, you know, reading the annual reports, looking at the financial statements, listening to the earnings calls. So our brains are wired to couple our mental well-being with the fluctuations of the stock price as opposed to the gradual growth in intrinsic value of the business. And when the stock price uh, drops, we start panicking. And when the stock, the stock price goes up, I mean, we start feeling great. But in reality, uh, it should be exactly the opposite. So this is how we use, uh, this is how we think. So uh, we uh, like to buy a business like this at or below its intrinsic value. So when the stock price is above its intrinsic value, and intrinsic value is an approximate me measure. We have our ways of uh, calculating the intrinsic value. So when the stock price is above, we go and sell puts either at or below uh, the intrinsic value. Uh, we choose those strikes. And most importantly, we keep the capital aside. So unlike a typical option seller who would uh, sell a naked put and then hope and pray that the stock price doesn't come down and uh, you know have all kinds of uh, you know stock losses and all those things, we actually hope and pray that the stock price comes down uh, and we get assigned because that is our main objective. Our main objective is to buy a high quality business at an attractive price. And uh, sometimes uh, the uh, puts get assigned. We are very happy. But uh, when the puts don't get assigned, 
at least we are generating a return on the cash and we have our ways of uh, benchmarking that yield uh, uh, typically we look for a certain yield and what we typically do is uh, you know take a portion of that premium uh, the premium cash flow that we uh, we have brought in and we uh, also position ourselves to benefit from the upside in case the put doesn't get assigned and the stock price runs away so we would typically buy uh, you know a fewer number of call options uh, to capture the upside and uh, you know we have very specific calculations to calculate our returns so in between the strike of the call and the and the short put uh, we ensure that we have a profit zone of course if the stock price moves up our calls become profitable uh, the put puts expire worthless and if the stock price moves down you know the calls might uh, expire worthless, but we get uh, we get assigned, and you know from there onwards, our return depends upon the long term return that the business is generating. Now, the reality of the world around us is not uh, always uh, a very happy situation. Uh, this is the reality of the world around us. Now, you know, a few months back, I was. Uh, I was doing uh, a webinar and I used the same slide where I had these five pictures and I had even mentioned there that, uh, you know, we are very sure that, uh, you know, there will be more uh, such uh, negative events. Only thing is we don't know what and we don't know when they will hit us. But now we know what the next one is. And, uh, you know, these are events which are completely outside my con uh, our control. Now, my heart absolutely bleeds for uh, the innocent victims on either side of uh, these conflicts uh, but uh, unfortunately events like these are outside our control and uh, you know i have a i have uh, a belief that we humans we are a flawed species i mean we are responsible for inflicting uh, the maximum amount of uh, of uh, of negativity on on ourselves and uh, you know it's it's not restricted to a uh, to a conflict, you know, it can be a trade war, it can be, uh, you know, st stupid financial risk taking, which uh, brought the entire world uh, to its knees. Now, while those events are outside our control, what is very much in our control is proper financial education. And that is something that all of us wait to ourselves. Now, you know, when, when events like that uh, happen, uh, with something called the VIX index, which I'm pretty sure most of you would be familiar with, uh, the fear index. So that typically uh, shoots up. Now, uh, now it's unfortunate that uh, these are the times which are also very ripe for taking advantage of the, the markets. So uh, again, most of you know what an implied volatility is. So uh, so these are also the times when the implied volatility shoot up. Now, you remember I was telling you about the story of, uh, of Peter, uh, that a trader who uh, ended up buying uh, a bunch of put options. Now, uh, he ended up buying uh, a way, way out of money. That is a $5 strike put option. But you won't believe it. Uh, that he paid seven dollars to buy those uh, put options so that was the craziness that was uh, going on in the market now uh, you know anyone who is familiar with options would know that the maximum amount you can make by buying a five dollar put option is going to be five dollars provided someone uh, you know you get to buy that option free of course in reality that does not happen you have to pay a premium to buy that option uh, and the maximum amount uh, you'll uh, make is uh, if the company uh, stock goes to zero uh, then you will make five dollars minus the premium. But GameStop put options, five dollars strike put options. The way the bid ask spread was during that time was uh, trading for seven dollars, the ask price, and that is what uh, our friend uh, uh, Peter had done. So uh, you know that tells you the kind of uh, st stupidity that uh, the uh, many of these novice traders they uh, they do without even understanding what they are doing. Now, help me to uh, help me to fill in the blanks. What do you think is the same word that uh, that goes in uh, in these two blanks? It is wise for investors to be fearful when others are dash and dash when others are fearful. It's the, it's the same word. So let's see who can uh, who can tell me what that word is. It's it's quite a well known. Uh, it's quite a well known. Uh, yeah, uh, Michelle is right. Uh, it's greedy. So it's wise for investors to be fearful when others are greedy and uh, be greedy. 
when others are fearful. So Warren Buffett uh, belongs in uh, you know uh, this philosophy, and uh, during times of market panic, uh, uh, this is how uh, the the various stocks uh, look like. But if someone looks under the bonnet, it might be business as usual for for uh, you know many of these businesses and uh, you know it's times like these which actually uh, are the times to take advantage of these opportunities now that reminds me uh, my own story now uh, you know i had invested that was a long time back uh, you know over two decades back and i was uh, fairly clueless at that point of time i had invested a bunch of my savings uh, in in uh, 2001 and uh, by October 2002, exactly around the time when my eldest son was born, uh, thanks to the dot-com uh, bubble bursting, my portfolio got, uh, got cut into half. And I was in absolute total panic. I was clueless about the fact that this was the literally the best time to buy technology businesses. Of course, the good ones. I mean, not the, you know, not the pet.com and all those, all those uh, you know, stupid businesses, but the, the high-quality tech businesses. Uh, I was clueless about analyzing a business, and the only thing I knew existed was the stock price, which I was watching day in and day out. So I made the most common mistake that many inexperienced investors make. And what do you think? What do you think I did? I, I sold, putting my family in a. And that time, you know, I, I didn't have much money. Uh, a young family putting my family in a very difficult situation. You know, time of course flies. My the same son, he just finished uh, his national service and. Uh, joined uh, university and he's an investor himself and uh, you know fortunately he has a much better temperament than what i used to have when i was younger and uh, of course he has the advantage of uh, starting early and he has you know many many decades of compounding ahead of him so that's uh, the good thing now a situation like that would have been scary uh, i mean these would have been scary situations without any cash flows to take advantage of those corrections and if I'm forced to sell my shares during these drawdowns because of leverage or whatever reason, I mean, ignorance can be a reason, which, uh, you know, was uh, the case with me, uh, you know, uh, two decades back. Now, in a situation like that, help me to fill up the blanks. I wish I had more dash to take advantage of these great discounts. What word do you think uh, would, would fit here? I wish I had more dash to take advantage of, of uh, these situations. Anyone? Absolutely. Chikyong, you're absolutely right. Uh, so what, I, what if I taught you how to generate fresh cash flows on an ongoing basis to be able to take full advantage of the amazing deals that Mr. Market keeps offering us from time to time? Now, real wealth is not created by speculating on the direction of short-term share price fluctuations. And when I'm saying real wealth, I'm, I'm talking of, uh, let's say, eight figure, you know, uh, nine figure, that kind of wealth. It is created by buying high quality businesses at a discount to its intrinsic value and owning them over a long period of time. So that's how real wealth is created. So, uh, let's dig into this uh, case study, uh, but before before diving into it, I I want to understand: Is there anyone who has ever found yourself in the same situation that the markets have crashed and there are lots of great discounted opportunities available, but you don't have cash uh, to take advantage of these opportunities? Have you ever found yourself in 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 such situation? Anyone? Type me if you have found yourself in such a situation so that I know that, uh, you know, a case study like this uh, can be can be relevant to uh, to the uh, to the group here. OK, Michelle says, uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, since when is there enough cash? Uh, Pragati says, yes, yes. OK, so I guess, uh, you know, it would be relevant. Uh, so that's where our ATM strategy comes in. And yeah, it's, it's a tongue in cheek uh, uh, name, but, uh, you know, the, the ATM actually uh, stands for uh, something, and uh, you know, and we decided to name it uh, the the ATM strategy. So our uh, advanced subscribers, our diamond level subscribers, uh, would be able to uh, relate to it. 
So this strategy is a combination of these two concepts that we discussed about. One is the extrinsic value or the time value of an option decaying with the passage of time. And uh, the fact that the implied volatility of uh, options sometimes shoot up from time to time when uh, there are these uh, these negative events or the, uh, when the, uh, the fear uh, in the market is, is very high. So this strategy also works as a great portfolio hedge for those of you who are, you know, who consider uh, it to be important, but we don't bother about uh, doing any kind of hedging because we spend our time, our hedge is our understanding of the business. So we think of ourselves as, as business owners. But nevertheless, now before we jump into uh, the ATM strategy and show you, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, how uh, we build the concept. Who would be interested in knowing our cash flow record uh, following the same strategy? Uh, you know, I don't want to be uh, presumptuous, so that's why I will always ask for your feedback. So, if you would like to see our actual cash flow records uh, using the same ATM strategy, type CF. CF stands for cash flow. Uh, no, yes, please doesn't get you. Type <laughs> the CF for for cash flow. If I see enough interest, then I will. Uh, happily share with you the actual cash flow records. So we have been, uh, you know, very diligent. And when I say we, it's basically, uh, you know, the, the family office, which is the parent company of uh, MoneyWise Smart. So we have been very diligent uh, about keeping our records uh, since uh, 2017 April, that is six and a half years uh, from now. And, uh, you know, earlier we used to uh, we used to practice a lighter version of the ATM strategy. So our cash flow started with uh, you know a few thousand dollars every month, and you can see as uh, time progresses, they have been growing. And then in 2022, when we uh, when we went uh, full, we went full throttle, uh, and uh, uh, that's what several of our subscribers did. I mean, our cash flow has also exploded. And the best part of the strategy is, as you can see, I mean, there are months we have brought in, uh, you know, close to half a million uh, dollars of uh, of cash flow. Last few months, we have been consistently bringing in uh, more than hundred thousand dollars of uh, cash flow. Now, we actually call this a float. Uh, and uh, you know, many of our subscribers have, have started practicing the strategy. The beauty of this strategy is that the 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 valve is in our hand, the lever is in our hands. And, and depending upon certain conditions, we can decide, I can literally go and decide that, you know what, this month, uh, I want to uh, bring in 200,000 or $300,000 of, uh, of cash flow. And uh, I would I would do that if I see uh, great opportunities in the market to deploy that cash. Otherwise, I'll, I'll be, you know, uh, happily waiting. So we, you know, sometimes like to step back and look at the big picture. And this picture gives us a lot of happiness because this shows us how over the months our cash flows have, uh, you know, uh, gradually exploded. And, and that's exactly what we had anticipated when we conceptualized, conceptualized this, uh, this strategy uh, as uh, you can see from this, uh, and I'm sure you would have realized by now that we absolutely love these exponential uh, uh, graphs, uh, you know, pointing upwards. And we can reasonably expect our uh, cash flows to be significantly higher 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line if uh, we stayed uh, uh, disciplined uh, about uh, this strategy. And, uh, you know, we don't compromise on the uh, risks. And uh, and as you can see, it's it's not steady. I mean, it's fairly lumpy. There will be times when uh, you know, few months after we had a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar month, uh, we had a five thousand dollar month uh, back to. But it's completely in our hands. Now, you know, the best part of this strategy is uh, twofold. One is it can be done with very small account sizes too. Now, I use one instrument, which is uh, which is the high priced. Uh, uh, option uh, that is uh, that uh, is listed on the CBOE, uh, Chicago Board of uh, Options Exchange. Uh, but they also have instruments which are one-tenth uh, of the size, which many of our subscribers with smaller accounts use. And we also have options listed in other exchanges around the world, like uh, Eurostox or, or Japan. You know, even those options are, uh, are equally suitable for uh, for these uh, strategy and especially uh, keeping the time zones in mind because you know what i practice i sometimes have to get up uh, fairly early in the morning at the time of market close uh, chicago 
but uh, gradually I'm shifting more to the European time when, uh, in fact, uh, you know, after some time, uh, maybe it'll be, you know, before the end of this webinar, if that happens, I'll actually show you uh, the, some of the uh, orders and you'll see how simple and elegant this, uh, the strategy is. So, so yeah, very flexible. And the other good part is this strategy takes less than 15 minutes a week if you're using weekly options to execute. If you're using monthly options, it could take less than 15 minutes a month. Of course, I mean, I use daily options. So, but then, you know, I don't spend more than uh, literally uh, 15 minutes uh, every day uh, or, you know, whenever uh, whenever I have to uh, put in. Now, the question is, what do we do with this? Uh, do with this cash? You know, bringing in the cash is great. Uh, but what do we do with this cash? This is what we do with this cash. I mean, we look for opportunities when companies that we have researched this is meta by the way uh, i uh, you know i still i tend to use sometimes the old uh, ticker uh, so like uh, for example at that point of time we were researching uh, meta and, and by the way we don't just blindly go and buy uh, the companies we have a platform called the uh, multi-bagger research series where in fact some of you uh, here are already subscribers where we do extensive deep dive research i mean the kind of research you will uh, you'll hardly find uh, anywhere we literally take uh, many months to uh, research businesses so as you can see uh, this was the time meta stock price kept falling and we kept buying because we had the cash flows to uh, to generate and and february itself was uh, you know a big month we were because the volatility was quite high wix was elevated and and we just kept uh, buying meta and then as the share price uh, fell below 200, rather than panicking, we kept buying more. We, we increased our, our purchases. And uh, I'm sure all of you uh, know that this uh, would have uh, turned out extremely uh, well for us. I mean, now Meta is uh, somewhere around $315. And this is like literally just uh, slightly more than a year back. And uh, then around September, we were busy buying Adobe and, and uh, Google, that is Alphabet below $100, Adobe at, uh, you know, less than $300. And right now it's close to $550. And that's just about just about a year. And we could do this simply because uh, when the stock prices uh, crash, we look at that as a positive. I mean, we actually celebrate when the stock prices crash because that is when uh, we increase the tap, the cash flow tap, and, and it allows us to buy these these high quality businesses and each of these businesses are very high quality uh, some of you who are uh, you know based in india would be very, very familiar with uh, hdfc bank hdb is basically uh, hdfc bank uh, area that is listed in the nyse i mean we researched uh, hdfc bank but we use hdb because you know most of our sub subscribers are outside india but again you know uh, i consider it to be probably the best bank in the world if not, if not one of the, and, uh, and you know, many of you from India, but you probably agree with me. So what about the excess cash? Because not always, like for example, in 2023, uh, we barely bought anything because uh, you know, we are not finding uh, opportunities which are that attractively priced. So when we are in a situation like this, we park the excess cash in uh, US treasuries, which are basically cash equivalent. And uh, these days, thanks to the interest rates, I mean, you, you can get, uh, you know, around five, five and a half percent uh, yield on, on your cash just by uh, literally uh, parking it in the treasuries. Now, I have highlighted uh, this row on the 10th of October. You can see on this date, if I decided to park some cash in some uh, short term treasuries, I would have. Uh, I would have got about 5.6%, but instead of doing that, we use another option strategy, which is again a fairly advanced strategy, which uh, you know we teach our uh, advanced members, the diamond members, uh, using which on the same day, that is on the 10th of March, I invested about uh, $209,000. This was just excess cash. I had uh, you know nothing to buy. So I, rather than just leaving it, I parked it uh, in this particular strategy. And uh, this, uh, it had a guaranteed maturity uh, proceeds of $214,000 on 15th of March. Now that is exactly equivalent to a risk-free treasury bill offering an even higher yield than, we had seen 5.6%, right? That the treasury was offering on that day. I got a yield of 5.9% from this. And if you want, you can actually, you know, take a screenshot and do the calculation uh, yourself. Uh, for those of you who are who are familiar, how to calculate the XIRR or IRR, and you'll see this. 
you know, this is a very, very powerful strategy which we uh, teach our subscribers. Very easy to implement. And this is irrespective of where SPX ends by, by 15th of March. I mean, I, I really don't care. It can go to uh, 10,000 or 2,000 for all I care. My return of 5.9% is guaranteed here. So what does all these strategies uh, translate into? Uh, now, of course, I mean, you might be thinking that, okay, so you're doing all these strategies, but, uh, you know, how has your how has your track record been? I have shown you the track record of the cash, but, the, you know, the, the cash comes with, uh, you know, some distant uh, 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 float liabilities. But uh, if I look at, uh, I recently pulled out my, uh, pulled out our uh, track record from uh, Interactive Brokers, and you can see, I mean, this is uh, since 2018, when, uh, you know, we uh, started using uh interactive brokers for most of these uh, strategies so we have been comfortably beating the spx now uh, that doesn't mean we do not have drawdowns there are times when we have drawdowns but these are actually the times we look forward to because if you can intuitively understand from our strategies these are the times when our cash flows shoot up and we get to buy these discounted uh, stocks available in the market this was uh, i think the covid uh, period right and that results in when the markets turn, we accelerate way ahead of uh, SPX, which you can see happening even now. So, so over the long run, we have comfortably beaten the uh, beaten the SPX. Our last quarter uh, we had a drawdown, but you know YTD uh, we are ahead. Last one year, uh, you know our returns are significantly higher than the SPX, and so is uh, over the long run. Now, this cash flow not only funds undervalued stocks it also pays for our lifestyle now i like backpacking to some of the most uh, remote places on earth and it is a passion which broadens my mind and helps me to understand the world around us much better in case of my business partner fun young uh, the cash flows allow him to live and work uh, from wherever he feels like and right now he is in nepal and in the last three years he has lived and operated from six different countries. You can see uh, Pandyang in different countries. I mean, uh, he leads a completely uh, nomadic lifestyle. He's a digital nomad in the true sense of the term. Uh, and uh, right now he's sitting in Nepal. He's here uh, holding the fort, uh, uh, you know, keeping track of uh, all your questions. Uh, where in Nepal are you, Pandya? Uh, is it Pokhara or Kathmandu? Oh, Pokhara, no, yeah. Uh, Pokhara, yeah. So he is... Uh, he's having fun there, uh, trekking, and, uh, and these are some of uh, you know my travel pictures. I uh, love visiting uh, remote places and uh, going and hanging out with locals. I mean, uh, you know, in this picture, I was uh, staying with this family, very loving family. It's uh, you know in the Himalayan mountains in a small village. Here you can see I was uh, hanging out and taking selfies with these Peruvian kids, uh, and here I was in a small fishing village in Fiji. In a remote island called Gunu in Fiji, and there they have this uh, tradition. So, for me to be accepted in the village, I had to sit with the village elders uh, and uh, you know participate in this drinking ceremony. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, you know, I absolutely and, and this picture is from the world's least visited country. Uh, that's uh, Tuvalu. It was just before I was landing. So, this was this is the island on which uh, the capital city is. Uh, that's Punahuti. Uh, this is somewhere in the mountains uh, i think so you know the ultimate situation one can be in is the combo of financial education that is proper financial education uh, a stream of cash flows when you need it the most and most importantly freedom when going to going on amazing holidays or traveling the world is not a drain on your resources but the cash goes in even when uh, we are traveling to these interesting places now if you think this is an interesting strategy, and if you are interested in uh, learning the nitty gritty of this cash flow strategy, uh, let's hear some feedback. Type uh, CF if if this still interests you, uh, based on what I have shared so far, so that I know that uh, you know it's it's uh, still interesting uh, for you. And uh, again, I mean, I don't want to be presumptuous. I only want to share if I believe that uh, you know this is still. Uh, uh, Retaining your interest. Okay, all right. So that's uh, 
enough number of people who say they're interested. Now, you know, expertise in any domain is not achieved overnight, uh, be it sports or music or uh, let's say if you want to be an expert surgeon, uh, it takes, it literally takes decades of deliberate practice. And that is exactly what went in, uh, in creating our option series program. Uh, where uh, we teach our subscribers how to generate cash flows when you uh, need it the most. Now, this is not a program uh, about short-term trading. Uh, it has got nothing to do with uh, trading. This is only meant for long-term investors. Now, for those of you who are not interested in hearing about our option series program, the main content part of today's session, the stuff that I wanted to touch upon, it's it's over. So you absolutely feel free to uh, log out. If you think, uh, you know, this is not for you or, or you know, long-term investing is not something that uh, you do, I hope you have, you know, got some different perspectives which you can go and use. And I, I hope you found the session useful. But for those who decided to stay on, I'm, you know, happy to share with you uh, the details of uh, our uh, option series program. And uh, uh, as you would have realized by now that the cash flow is something like uh, the oxygen that we breathe, and that is the most important term. So uh, so now that enough of you have expressed your interest, uh, so I'll uh, take you through what we teach in our option series program. Now in option series, we teach how to use option premiums to fund your investment portfolio, we, we teach strategies to generate cash flows to boost your returns without increasing risk. And managing risk is the most important thing that we that we uh, you know focus on. We teach how to position yourself to acquire more shares of your chosen businesses at your desired uh, price, uh, and how to eliminate the risk from your positions, like what I briefly demonstrated uh, to you. Uh, and by the way, by now I have not even scratched the surface. I mean, uh, you will soon see uh, that there are you know large number of strategies that we practice. Uh, we teach how to generate an attractive yield on the cash that's uh, waiting to be deployed, and we also teach how to generate explosive profits by risking very little capital. Now, the option series program is built using the expertise that I have gained from different sources and learning from different teachers. For example, these are all the teachers who have taught me at different points of time. Now, many of you would know this gentleman uh, in, in the middle. Uh, does any of you know? Uh, can I see if any of you can uh, tell us now, who this person is with the coffee, uh, coffee cup? Uh, absolutely right. Uh, Taleb, Nassim Taleb. So, uh, so I, uh, you know, have uh been uh, very closely following his writing i have read uh, all his books and this is a picture when uh, i met him in nus he was visiting and we had a session uh, where you know he was discussing his uh, way of uh, thinking now uh, this person on the left this person uh, in the polo shirt his name is george fontanes he was my first mentor and uh, you know he uh, was a harvard uh, graduate harvard business school graduate i used to travel to the us four times a year uh, to participate in uh, an elite mastermind. I mean, I spent, I invested a lot of money, over $50,000 uh, uh, just to uh, learn from him and, you know, with all the travel and all. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was, uh, now, uh, the interesting part is over time, uh, my philosophy has changed. You know, once I discovered Buffett and once I discovered this gentleman on the right, who uh, I know some of you know who he is, He's again another rock star uh, professor. Uh, his name is Professor Bakshi, based in India. One of the smartest uh, investing minds uh, that I have come across. And this is a session which very recently uh, Fan Liang and I, and also uh, uh, if uh, Abhay is here, he was also there. In fact, that's where uh, I met uh, Abhay. Uh, very interesting session. Now, uh, you know, uh, coming back to George, so George uh, gave me the initial grounding uh, in options and taught me how to think uh, first principles. Uh, now, I had made up my mind that if George Fontanelles asks me to stand on one leg while putting in an order, I would do that. That was my level of commitment. And, uh, you know, as I said, I used to travel 
uh, to meet him often. Unfortunately, during one of his trips to Singapore, you know, we literally had a had a meeting the previous day, but suddenly he passed away uh, here, and that was uh, that was very sad. Now, subsequently, uh, this gentleman Warren Buffett also massively influenced my thinking, and uh, for a lot of people who do not know this. Warren Buffett actually uses options, but he does not use options to trade. He uses options the way he thinks of an insurance business. Uh, he uses options as a source of generating float. And that is exactly what we do. So Warren Buffett talked about this in his 2008 letter. And I have uh, spent extensive amount of time pouring over his letters. I read each of them multiple times. And several of our advanced strategies, which we build completely bottom up. I mean, you will actually not uh, find those uh, strategies elsewhere because those are, uh, you know, uh, built uh, proprietary, uh, but based and conceptualized uh, uh, based on what we have learned from Buffett, his flow generation uh, strategies. So I have uh, been a lifelong learner, as you can see from all these certificates, attended, you know, numerous programs from University of Michigan, Ross School of Business, you know, through Coursera, uh, programs on uh, advanced valuation uh, techniques. I trekked to Columbia Business School to attend their uh, executive program. And uh, you can see from this invoice for a three or four day program, you know, they charge $7,200. Uh, uh, but I never uh, basically shied away from investing in my own uh, self-education. And uh, complemented that with a massive amount of reading. I mean, I try to emulate Warren Buffett. He reads uh, six hours a day and 500 pages a day. Uh, you know, I'm not that uh, smarter reader or that faster reader, but I, I tr try to, and that's what I do most of my day. I mean, Pan Liang and I, we basically just sit and read, read annual reports, uh, read uh, different documents uh, related to companies' uh, earnings. So I, I try to read, uh, you know, at least a, a couple of hundred uh, pages every day. And uh, we also do massive amount of backtesting. So these are screenshots from uh, you know, the uh, options platform that we use to uh, do all our analysis and backtesting. Uh, and before we actually practice any of our strategies with real money, uh, we, uh, you know, we spend literally many months and sometimes years. Like this particular ATM strategy, it took us years to uh, conceptualize. And we only teach what we have extensively tested on our options analysis platform. And uh, I always believed that the best way to learn is to teach. And that is what I have been doing over the past several years. So I have been invited uh, by various uh, universities, various platforms to uh, teach about our investing strategies. These are uh, pictures from uh, some local universities, NTU uh, and SMU, where uh, I have uh, visited a few times as a guest uh, lecturer. This picture is uh, me uh, speaking to our uh, local uh, investor community, uh, uh, part of a group. And uh, you know, interestingly, everywhere the the different stuff that uh, we talked about has has played a role in conceptualizing uh, these strategies that that we teach. Uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, Tiger Brokers, a uh, broker uh, firm. Uh, they invited me. Uh, they were interviewing. They wanted to interview me for uh, their uh, the annual day, and they also wanted me to make a presentation on uh, uh, on our options strategy. And as you can see from this slide, I'm talking about uh, Warren Buffett's flow generation. I mean, because that is what we practice. And uh, this is a recent series, as you can make out from uh, from my hair, uh, which has. You know, and by the way, I, I should have told you that the past pictures that you have uh, seen, I mean, that proves that I used to have hair at one point of time, uh, and I'm just lazy to to change them. So uh, IFAS, many of you would be familiar with IFAS. They have their own uh, TV channel, and they invited me to create a four-part series uh, with them. So, you know, it's it's there. Uh, the videos are, I think, there on our Facebook group, or also you can go and check them out on IFAS TV. So, so all. This culminated in uh, finally our option series program, which is a uh, which is a program that's uh, hosted on a learning management uh, platform called Teachable. It comprises over two hundred and fifty videos, and you can see the number of modules. Each module is a different strategy, and it's probably I wouldn't say probably. I'm very confident that it's the most expense uh, extensive options program that you will uh, ever come across. And I would actually uh, you know, throw this as a challenge because I have 
extensively looked for several years. I haven't come across anything that is as extensive, but not meant for traders, meant for long-term investors. And uh, this is just uh, you know a small snapshot of what we cover in the ATM strategy. There are many more screenshots. I mean, you know, the slide uh, would not fit all the modules. You can see that this strategy itself is is a program in itself, which we have been practicing for years. If you found this video interesting, then you should definitely join our platform. It's completely free to join. There are no hidden costs. The link to join is available in the description section below. And I also welcome you to join our Facebook group called the Investment Forum. That's a place where we discuss these high quality businesses with several other DIY serious investors. And you will benefit from the discussion, I'm pretty sure. And if you enjoyed this video, can I please request you to hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel. It does not cost you a penny, but it'll really help us with the YouTube algorithm. And we will be able to notify you whenever we are coming up with other interesting videos on company research or other investment concepts. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for your time.